Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Adam Draw Stuff. I'm Adam and I draw stuff, and today I want to cover my top five tips on how to draw better. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on the intro. The title kind of says it all. Just going to give you my top five tips, so let's just jump into it. Tip number one, probably the most important, would be to carry a sketchbook. Any sketchbook will do, but I typically tend to carry around a smaller sketchbook because it's just a little bit simpler logistically to carry around something that's smaller as opposed to a full size eight and a half by 11 or larger sketchbook. Um, if it's something that's smaller and more portable, you'll probably tend to actually pick it up and take it with you when you go. Whereas if you have one that's a little bit too big, chances are you're not going to take it with you every single day just because of the fact that it's so much bulkier. Any sketchbook will do though. If you have a backpack that you carry around with you and you want a larger sketchbook, then by all means go for it. But Carrying around a sketchbook is great because it allows you the convenience to be able to practice basically anywhere you're at. All you need is a sketchbook and a pencil and you're good to go. You never know when you might be out and about, just kind of in your normal day-to-day -day life, and an idea pops in your head of something that you may want to do, a drawing that you might want to make or a piece of art that you'd like to do. And having a sketchbook on hand at all times is such a great way to kind of capture those little ideas and jot them down or do a quick little thumbnail sketch or anything uh, just super fast so you don't forget that idea, you don't lose your sort of your momentum from day to day. Tip number two is to practice daily. So this really goes along with tip number one, um, carrying a sketchbook every day. But practicing every day is really the only key to getting better. Um, I could give you a whole bunch of little tips. I could give you little tricks here and there. But honestly, the only way to truly, the only foolproof way of truly getting better is to practice every single day. And I know it doesn't really sound very glamorous. It doesn't sound fun. We all want that kind of instant gratification, that quick, that hack or that cheat code to just being better. But it doesn't really work that way. Practice day in and day out, that's kind of the foolproof, the main way of getting better. And it's not just drawing, but in, in anything, in any skill that you want to foster, you have to practice every day. Um, you have to maintain a consistency so your brain and your, your body, your arm and your hand all get used to the motions that are required in being able to draw well. And there's no substitution for daily practice. So that kind of goes back to carrying a sketchbook with you every single day wherever you go. You'll always be able to practice every day if you have the proper tools. The other reason that you would want to practice every day is that keeping a sketchbook or keeping um, a log of all of the work that you've done kind of creates a timeline of your progress throughout the years or throughout even just weeks or months. You may feel like maybe you're not making any progress at all, but if you go back and look day by day by day at all of the drawings you've made, all the sketches, all of the work that you've done, you'll have a very clear timeline and be able to see right in front of you in black and white the progress that you've made. And that can be really motivating to keep moving forward. One exercise that I do like to do every single day that's really great for building and maintaining your hand-eye coordination and your motor skills is just what I call the line exercise. And what the line exercise is, is basically what it sounds like. Draw a line, any line, any curved line at all, on your paper. And then what we're going to do now is, it sounds simple, but we're just going to keep drawing over that line over and over again. And the reason that you would draw over the lines again and again is because it trains your hand to do exactly what you want to do. It really strengthens your hand-eye coordination to actually have your hand follow the curves that you want it to make. So all that we would do here is I just drew a random line and we're just going to go over it again and again. And I'm doing this a little bit quickly, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to stray, right? We don't want to go off the beaten path there. We want to stick to the line that we drew originally as close as possible. And if you do this day in and day out, just as a quick little exercise, even if you only do it a few times, you'll definitely see an improvement in your hand-eye coordination and in actually being able to make lines that are intentional and have your hand do exactly what you want it to do. And this is not easy. This may seem like it's easy, but it's a little bit deceptive. Um, but 
if you just keep going over this over and over again, go as slow as you need so that you stay in the lines and do this exercise every single day and you'll definitely see an improvement in a short amount of time. Tip number three is to find a community of like-minded artists. With the advent of the internet, this is easier than ever. There are communities like DeviantArt or Instagram or Behance, um, so many different places online, Facebook groups, um, just a litany of places where you can connect with other artists and other people of all skill levels. Ones who are just kind of getting started, uh, just learning the ropes a little bit like you might be, or also very advanced artists that you can look up to and, and see them as sort of a, a barometer or a mile marker of where you want to be someday with your art. The other reason that you might want to be in a community of artists is that it can be very discouraging at times. Um, you can go through these long little stretches where nothing that you're making seems to come out correctly or you feel like you're not making any progress at all and that can be very demotivating. Um, to connect with other people who are going through that same thing can help you kind of get over the hump a little bit and come out the other side better for it. Tip number four is to steal. Okay, so I don't actually mean steal. Uh, but I do mean imitate. Imitate other artists that you admire, that you look up to, or that you really, ones who you really like their style. The reason that you would want to imitate is because it'll expose you to different art styles that you may not have explored on your own. And this has been done since the dawn of time, basically. Um, artists in the Renaissance, they would study under a master and um, they would emulate their styles and learn all of their techniques. And this is kind of a simpler version of that. Again, with the advent of the internet, you have access to so many artist portfolios, um, so many different styles and different mediums that you can try a different style every single day and never run out of material. The biggest advantage to imitation in this way is that with enough time, you will inevitably pick up new techniques and new styles that you can then apply to your own original works. Tip number five is to pick up a few good reference books. You may think that with so much information being available online that books are kind of gonna go the way of the dodo, um, but I still find a lot of value in reference books because what they do that the internet doesn't necessarily always do is that they compile a ton of information in one place that's easily accessible. If you've ever tried to learn basically anything online, it can be really tough because you have to find multiple sources, you have to pull from different places to compile all the information that you need. And oftentimes in a good reference book, you'll find very concise material that makes sense and that it all flows together and it's all in one place. It's very convenient and it's all written by the same person. So it's in the same tone, the same learning style, and that consistency can be very helpful. Reference books also tend to teach in a way that's linear. So you will start with a certain set of lessons and then they will build on the previous lessons and little by little you'll kind of stack your skills in a way that makes sense and in a way that your brain will naturally want to learn. So some of my favorite art reference books are Art Fundamentals by 3D Total and this is a really great sort of all-around book. It covers so many different areas from anatomy to perspective to value to color. Um, it really just runs the gamut of things that you as an artist would want to know. And there's so much value in having this book on hand that you can always go back to and refer to if you kind of get stuck that it's just a must-have at least for me. Another really great reference book is Manga for the Beginner. This is by Christopher Hart who is an established manga artist and in this book he takes you through all of the basics of drawing the typical manga style person. Um, and just like I said earlier, in, in the sense that most reference books build on previous lessons, this book is structured in the exact same way. So you start with very simple principles um, things like construction and basic proportions that you need to get down and then once those things have been mastered they build on that a little bit and you can go into other things like posing and learning different styles and how to convey motion and energy. So you can really get a lot of great information if manga or anime or people in general 
is something that you would like to get better at. I highly recommend this book. One of my all-time favorite reference books for drawing is this book right here, Drawing Realistic Textures in Pencil. This is by J.D. Hilberry, and this is a book that I have had for ages and ages and ages, and it is so good at doing exactly what it says, teaching you how to draw realistic textures in pencil. This is not necessarily a book for the beginner, though. This is something that would be for intermediate to maybe more advanced artists, but what he does do is teach you some kind of genius techniques for creating very realistic textures and for mimicking just about any texture you can think of. And it's great for bringing just an extra believability to your drawings. So highly, highly recommend that book. So I know I said that this was going to be five tips, but I'm going to throw one more in there anyway as sort of an honorable mention. And that is to use multiple pencils. Now I see a lot of people, um, especially in the beginning stages of learning how to draw, um, they don't use enough pencils. They don't use enough gradations or uh, grades of pencils. You may just stick with a typical number two pencil and think that that's just good enough. And in some cases it might be, but one thing that you might be missing to kind of get a little bit more depth is different grades of pencils. And if you're a little bit confused on what different grades of pencils are or what they do, I did make a video where I compared using just one pencil. Um, it was a two, a number two pencil with six other drawing pencils of various hardnesses. And basically the gist of it is there are, there's a spectrum of really hard to really soft pencils and then a bunch in between. And the harder the pencil, the lighter the line is going to be and the softer the lead, the softer the pencil, the darker it'll be. It's definitely advantageous to use multiple pencils to really help you get a large gradient of tones in your drawings. So there you go. Those are my top five tips for learning how to draw better. I hope you liked this. I hope it was a little bit insightful. Um, I know it's kind of simple, but simplicity really is key. I didn't want to overcomplicate it and throw a bunch of things at you that aren't necessary. Keep it simple, put in your due diligence and do the work that's required and you'll have no choice but to be better. So there you go. I'm gonna leave you to it to go do the work, but before you go, hit like if you did like this video, ring the bell for notifications, and if you haven't yet already, make sure to subscribe so you can see all the new videos that I have coming because I have about a year's worth in the pipeline, and I don't think you're gonna to wanna to miss them. So thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.